Once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. What's going on YouTube, D546? Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bell. But let's go ahead and get into this. Got everything. I've got your name, I've got your address. I think I might pay you a visit. <laughs> Anyone can find anything on the internet, including your full legal name, your personal email, your home address, phone number, and even your relatives. Just do a Google search for your personal information or someone that you know, name, email, phone number, and see if a people search site shows up. This information is accessible because of data brokers who profit by selling your information to robocallers, telemarketers, spammers, and anyone else that wants to learn more about you. That's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor. Aura will identify data brokers that are exposing your information and automatically submit opt-out requests on your behalf. They'll even opt you out of junk mail and telemarketing lists. You can use my link, aura.com diggy, to try two weeks for free and see how many data brokers are sharing your information. It's also linked in the description. You can also scan the QR code. Aura has already found my information on literally over a hundred sites so far. And guess what? If they do take my identity, they'll cover me up to $1 million. They have a VPN, password manager, real-time credit and identity theft monitoring, internet parental controls, and antivirus software. If you sign up right now with my link, Aura will give you a two-week free trial. Go to Aura.com slash diggy to start your free trial now. Ooh, I'm gonna finally be able to get that PS5. All right, so it looks like it's official. It looks like it's officially official. The two coordinators that the Giants were gonna lose are offensive and defensive coordinator, Wink Martindale and Mike Kafka look like they're coming back this year. And I couldn't be more excited. I think the number one thing that the Giants had to go into next year with is continuity. I think continuity was the number one thing we had to go into this next football season with. Uh, starting off with the offense, I mean, football at this point, it, it starts with the offense. It's just that plain and simple. Daniel Jones has had what? He, he had Pat Shermer. He had, uh, I won't count Shermer. He's not an offensive coordinator, but he had Mike Shula to start off with. And then he had Jason Garrett. And then he had Freddie Kitchens, and then he had, um, then he had the the coordinator he has now. He had Mike Kafka, so that's four. So if next year he would have gone and gotten another offensive coordinator, that'd be five offensive coordinators in five years, and that's just unacceptable. You can't do that. You you can't do that. Um, at least allow him to settle into this new offense with this offense coordinator for two years. And then go out and get another guy, you know, because Mike Kafka had to leave or Mike Kafka got a job. So I'm excited that Daniel Jones is going to get another year in this offense, assuming that Daniel Jones is back. That he's going to get another year in this offense. Um, all the players, the offensive line, you know, whoever's going to be back next year, they're going to be in year two. And this is going to be one of the first times and forever that you could look at an offense that's actually a competent offense because not a Jason Garrett offense, but it's actually a competent offense where guys are in year two of a competent offense. So that means that the things that you saw last year that were done well should be done even better. The, the, the plays that you saw that were executed, they should be executed even better. That means that new wrinkles are going to be put into this offense because you have the same guy you got the same offensive coordinator you got him still working with brian dable so this offense is only going to get more comprehensive i expect daniel jones to take a next step and when i say next step i'm saying i expect him to look even more comfortable i'm not expecting an mvp season i don't know if that'll happen if that'll ever happen with daniel jones but i am expecting him to look a lot more confident i'm expecting him to make a lot more decisions at the line of scrimmage i'm expecting the ball to come out a little bit quicker i'm expecting all of that i'm expecting all of that so mike kafka being back is huge i think the number one thing with mike kafka is our offense is clearly the bills offense the brian dable offense between the 20s but once we get into the red zone 
this offense turns into a Kansas City offense. And as you see with Kansas City, they have no issue scoring in the red zone. And I expect that to continue. The Giants went from the 31st ranked red zone offense to top five. To top five. And that is huge. That is, is really ridiculously great. <laughs> the fact that we were able to move from literally the worst in the league to being a top five offense in the red zone. That is literally the difference between us being a nine and eight, nine, seven and one team and a, you know, a five win team. Because if you cannot score in the red zone, it is null and void, whatever you're doing on offense. Because if you get down there and you can't run the ball and you can't, you don't have any creativity, you're kicking field goal after field goal. And that's how Grant Gano is making the Pro Bowl because you, you, he's your offense. So that was really refreshing to see us finally capitalize on on offense in the red zone. And that is a huge part of Mike Kafka. Like I said, he brought that Kansas City. He brought the Andy Reid flair, and it's paying off. And then when you look at third down conversion percentage, the Giants were 22, so that's not the best. But one thing I will say is the decisiveness of Daniel Jones on third down at the end of the season seemed to really pay off. He was either running for that first down, he was firing it in there for that first down. Uh, that That is exactly what we wanna see. We, we're hoping that continues. We're hoping that he plays even more confident because you saw when this guy plays confident, he's putting up big numbers. He's he's he's, he's doing his thing. He, I mean, it's just that simple. Uh, you wanna add a new receiver to this offense. You wanna bring back Saquon or at least bring back somebody in that role or bring back a couple of people to fill that role. But I feel really good that this offense is going to be in the same hands that they were in last year. And continuity is huge. Continuity is huge. So moving on to the defensive side, uh, Wink Martindale, we found out about Wink Martindale not getting hired probably, you know, about a week ago today or maybe even further. But Wink Martindale is an, um, a genius. You know, Mike Kafka might be a genius in the making, but Wink Martindale is a genius already. Like, this guy blitzes much more than anybody else in the league. He does not give up big plays while blitzing. How many, you know, 50-plus yard plays have the Giants given up this year? Or 40-plus yard plays? And you would expect that to happen. You know, there, there's not many of those plays in the league, but you would expect that to happen with a guy that's, that's running literally cover one, cover zero, blitzes. And we rarely give up the big play and he's sending, you know, five, six people. A lot of times he'll only send five. A lot of times he'll send six. A lot of times he'll send seven. So Wink Martindale is a next level blitzing coordinator. He's a guy that can make in-game adjustments with the best of them. Uh, you saw what Spags did in this Super Bowl. Wink, I think, is, is right there on that level with Spags, if not better. Wink has been a, a one or two ranked defense multiple times as the Ravens defensive coordinator. He coached with guys like, uh, you know, Nick McLeod, guys like uh, Fabian Moreau, rookies. I mean, people who had no business playing as well as they did, but his scheme was allowing these players to do a lot of great things. Um, the Giants were able to get decent sack production without consistent sack, you know, play from the edges. And when I say consistent play, I mean, whether... Thibodeau was getting held or not, uh, whether Aziz was in the game or not, we did not have consistent pass rush from just those edge players. We just didn't. But he was able to constantly get hits on the quarterback, along with, of course, Dexter Lawrence, who he was able to get the most out of. A lot of people might give that credit to Andre Patterson, but also you got to give that credit to Wink. You got to give that credit to Wink. The defensive players talk about Wink Martindale as the same way that you see the Giants players, and this isn't me saying that Wink Martindale is Bill Belichick, but the same way that you see Giants players from the 80s talk about Bill Belichick, like how he has that strong of a hold on that defense, that's how they talk about Wink Martindale. They love the guy. Uh, he relates to the players. He's a player's coach, and he's also, you know, that old school coach that's, that's not going to take a bunch of shenanigans from the players. So, Really happy to have both of those guys back. I think they're kind of polar opposites of each other, but they're very similar. Like Wink Martindale is your old school, hard-nosed coach. Uh, Mike Kafka is your new school, 
you know, draw up, a, a, as Joe Judge would say, a guru scheme, which it seems like we needed a guru scheme. Joe Judge didn't realize that. But Mike Kafka will draw up a, a great playbook. Uh, he'll have a ton of, you know, wacky plays to choose from. And he's a young guy. So complete polar opposites. They both got jobs. But I would say they are both similar in the fact that they're really innovative, really innovative. Uh, they don't just do what everyone else is doing. And I think there's there's a lot of value to that. And that's why they both got second interviews. And I think this is probably the last year. Or hopefully this is the last year that Mike Kafka and uh, and Wink Martindale go out and get jobs, you know, go out and get interviews and don't get the job because if we have an even better season in this past year, one of them will be going somewhere. Yeah, that's that's just a fact. But I just thought it was very vital to have at least two seasons with the same coordinators on both sides. I think that just that does numbers. Um, I think that gives Shea Tierney another year to to get you know familiar with this offense that you know Mike Kafka has entered and maybe step up and be offensive coordinator. And I also think that um, it gives Drew Wilkins, who wants if he wants to stay as a Giants uh, coach, he's a guy that's been working with Wink Martindale for 12 years. Uh, yeah, 12 years altogether. And if he's able to do that, you know, maybe he steps up and he's our defensive coordinator and we have a similar defense. So uh, really excited to have both of these guys back. You guys let me know what you were hoping to happen with Wink Martindale and Mike Kafka. I know a small percentage of people, very small percentage, wanted one of them to go. Um, but I'm very happy that they're both back. If you made it this deep into the video. Come on, just hit the subscribe button. I make Giants content primarily, draft content secondarily. And during the season, I'm going to be doing a lot of reacting to pretty much most of the NFL games and everything NFL. So if you made it this deep, go ahead and join the D6 squads.